Hello there, my fellow followers of the Winter God, and welcome back to some Warhammer Fantasy lore. Today, in our second episode on the Cult of Ulrich, I thought about narrating something a little different. Because the Cult of Ulrich is arguably the most straightforward and simple of the old world faiths, we kinda covered most of what's important already in the previous video. So for today, I thought about narrating to you a legend of Ulrich instead. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? This particular myth about Ulrich is taken from an ancient collection of legends now kept in the Temple of Ulrich in Middenheim as a religious relic. The tome is titled Lord Ulrich and the Making of the World, and neither the author nor the collator is known. To quote, There was a time when the mortal world was young, and men had just come forth unto the earth. Father Tal and Mother Raya tended to the things of the land, and their son Manan was master of the things of the sea. Mor was king of the darkness, and Verena was queen of the light, and all was in balance. In the high summers, Lord Ulrich, brother of Tal and prince of the snow and ice, had no realm to tend to, so he had taken to walking the earth and the sky and the stars, seeking adventure. He travelled far beyond the ken of man or god, fought and slew the greatest monsters and dragons, and gave names to all the wonders that he found. With him in many of these journeys came his cousin, Prince Renald the Trickster, and many are the tales told of these two friends and their brave deeds. But all journeys have to end, and this is the tale of their last journey together. Ulrich and Renald had journeyed far to the north, farther than any god or man had ever gone before, into the frozen wastes. Here the air is so cold it freezes like water, and the earth shatters under one's feet like the first film of ice on a lake, and no man nor dwarf can survive. And here, at the very top of the world, Ulrich and Renald came upon a crack in the sky. Looking through it, they saw a great horror as it led into the realm of chaos. There stood all the beasts and demons and gods of chaos, a great and terrible horde, straining to widen the crack and hungry for the conquest of this world. Ulrich knew that should the demon army breach the gate, all of the world would be forever destroyed. He called upon his brother Renald to run to their father Tal and King Mor and tell them what they saw so they could make ready their armies to drive back the horde. Ulrich said that he would stand at a crack and hold it closed for as long as he could. Renald nodded to his cousin and then ran. But the trickster was a coward, and when he saw the chaos hordes, he knew only fear. Instead of running to tell his lords and family what happened, he instead ran and hid. He ran far, far away, to the burning deserts of the south, and buried himself deep under the sand there. Ulrich waited at the crack, holding it together with all his might, though on the other side a million demons clawed and grabbed at it, desperate to tear it further and gain entry. Ulrich stood and held the gate for a thousand years and won, his muscles ever straining with the effort, waiting for his cousin to return. But Renald never came. Angered at his cousin's cowardice, Ulrich swore never to speak to Renald again, nor ever to suffer a trickster to travel with him, for all who trusted in tricks were cowards and weaklings and deceivers. Finally, the strength of Ulrich began to wane, and he knew that his weakling cousin had not delivered a message. He knew as well that he couldn't hold the gate closed forever. So, despite his fears, he was forced to let go and bear the terrible news to his family himself. But when he arrived to do so, he found himself ignored and discounted. His brother Tal didn't believe that there could be another world beyond this, and Manan didn't care for things of the land. Great King Mor believed Ulrich's story, but he didn't see a great danger. Certainly, it was nothing that Ulrich himself couldn't handle. Ulrich despaired knowing that even now the Chaos Hordes must be pouring into the world, led by their own great and hideous gods, ready to destroy all that they had made. 
Finally, he appealed to Queen Verena, and in her wisdom, she saw that the danger was indeed real and very great, and that these fiends could destroy all the beauty and reason that she had created. She swore that even if her husband would not take action, she would, and she took up her husband's sword and rode out to battle with brave Lord Ulrich. And to this day, Verena still carries that weapon, as a reminder to Moore and all her subjects that wisdom has to be joined by action, lest all wisdom is forever lost. Shamed into action by his queen, Moore rallied all the gods behind him, and all their loyal followers, and rode out to meet the Chaos Gods and their demonic army. Moore was not a great warrior, and Ulrich had proven his wisdom in seeing the danger, so Moore gave command to Ulrich of all the gods' forces and Ulric thence became a god of battle. Wearing the great helm and swinging the massive warhammer, Ulric led the gods forth to meet the enemy. And where the hoofbeats of their horses fell, they cut a trail of mud deep into the earth, and the sea rushed in to fill it up, and became the great river Reich. All the while the chaos demons ran their claws of fire and blood, so sharp that they bit into the land itself, which is why the coast of Norska is so ragged and torn. The two forces would meet with uncontained fury. The Chaos Horde was uncountable in number, unending in hunger, unimaginable in savagery. But the courage of Ulrich never faltered. His fury would not abate, and his strength never wavered. He smashed the Chaos ranks with his great warhammer, breaking every charge that came. Behind him rode King Mor, bringing the darkness of death, and Queen Varena with her sword of light, and Tal with the fury of the lion, and Mother Raya with the strength of the bear, and Manan brought the sea forth into the field, dragging thousands of demons down into his realm where he could choke the life out of them. But still the demons and the chaos beasts came on, still the gods of light fought back though. The battle would rage for a thousand years, until finally, all the armies of Chaos were routed, and the Chaos Gods themselves were smashed to pieces beneath Ulrich's great warhammer. But the victory was with a cost. Thousands of the servants of the gods were dead. Lesser gods and heralds had been lost forever from the world. The dragons that fought with the gods had seen most of their number fall. And worst of all, King Mor himself was wounded. He lived, but he was forced to find succor in the Darklands and was never again seen on this earth. Seeing all this suffering and loss, Queen Varena fell to her knees and cried, and her tears flowed over the battlefield, and from them came the newborn goddess Shalia, a patron of compassion, bringing her mercy and healing to the injured and the despairing. Exhausted and grief-stricken, Ulrich and his fellow gods left the battlefield, carrying all their dead home to give them a proper burial. But here was their great mistake, for the bodies of the Chaos Hordes still lay upon the battlefield, a vast carpet of carnage. And on top of it all lay the hideous bodies of the Chaos Gods themselves. As they lay there, rotting, there came what always comes on a battlefield, a plague of rats to feast upon the dead. And with such a feast, the rats came in their thousands and then in their millions. They fed upon the beasts and demons of chaos. So great was the frenzy of feasting that the rats grew gigantic with the food, and fought with each other savagely for the greatest of spoils. Finally, the biggest and strongest rats fell upon the chaos gods themselves, and as they did so, they gained something of their nature. They grew in size and cunning and brutality into things that made a mockery of man himself. And so it was, when Ulric returned to the battlefield, he saw the rats feasting, and realized his great mistake. In their great consumption, the rats had taken on a remnant of the foul god's power, and became like them, a new race, the ratmen, the skaven, like men and dwarves, but made out of pure chaos. And they, like all things of chaos, would work forever to destroy humanity and all they had built and to one day bring about the victory of the Chaos Gods which had been denied to them the first time. Ulrich saw too that the demon troops that had been routed had returned and carried away what was not eaten, 
and then they had fled to the darkest quarters of the world. They too, these beastmen, would watch and wait for the chance to reclaim the world of men and dwarves. Ulrich had saved the earth, but he had doomed the mortals living there to face the threat of a similar destruction. Although now it was too late, Ulrich struck his warhammer hard on the stony ground and brought forth a great flame with it. And with that flame, he burned all the offal that remained into ashes. Then he charged his brother Manan to drown the entire field with water so it could never again taint the land. The waters of the ocean poured over the field, and it became the Sea of Chaos. Then all returned to the fate of man. He taught them how to mold steel to make warhammers and other weapons, and taught them how to wield them. He taught them how to fight, how to hunt, and how to kill. And lastly, he taught them how to make fire and how to use it. All of that was to prepare them for the endless battle with the minions of chaos. He would teach them well, and he gave them courage. He took charge over mankind, and promised he would ever watch over them, for now their lives would know only battle. In return, the people of Ulrich pledged to never suffer a chaos thing to live while they drew breath in their bodies, and to ensure that every beast of chaos that fell would be burned to ash, cleansed from this world by Ulrich's holy fire. Thus, the taint of chaos would never spread again. Ulrich's mistake must never be repeated, and creatures like the Skaven must never again be born onto the world. And so, the men of the old world kept this pact forevermore. They strike without fear against the Ratmen and the Beastmen and all creatures of chaos, and raise the cleansing flame of Ulrich to all the heavens above. And that, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about one of these legends concerning the god Ulrich for today. If nothing else, I do find it interesting because it tells a different story revolving fighting chaos, which is not the same as the Airtanks canon elven version. You know, the one where the elves save the world with an Aryan and the Waystone shenanigans. It shows that, just like in real life for a change, Different cultures have their own versions of certain events in myth form. Except in Warhammer it's a bit weird because, you know, the gods are actually real. Anyway, I do welcome your thoughts on the story, or anything else you might want to share, in the comments below. If you found this entertaining or informative, do leave a like, share, and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot, and have an awesome and healthy day.